Hey everyone, Mark here with Adventures in Ecom. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to talk about conversion rate optimization for your e-commerce store. Uh, I know it sounds like a mouthful and it is. So the typical website, the typical e-com website gets somewhere in the average of about 1% and lower conversion rate. That is from the time you drive traffic to your website, uh, mostly the product page, they convert to the cart and then on to the checkout and actually spend money with you. Now, a good e-commerce website will get somewhere in the neighborhood of 2%. It's double. <laughs> and then I'm going to show you the steps that we take to get 5% on a typical e-commerce website. And that's before we even introduce funnels. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to go over to the computer. Okay, we're back over here at the computer. And I want to show you this slide deck I've come up with for our online store conversion rate optimization. Man, that's a mouthful. Uh, I'm going to show you my 28 cool hacks that boost your conversion rate. And we're going to go all the way from the product page to the cart page to the checkout page. So I'll do this fast as I value your time. Product page, number one, add a countdown clock. Um, make sure that you mean, mean it with your countdown clock. Uh, we're trying all these different techniques uh, with an online store to get repeat business. Um, and make sure that those guys aren't turned off or lose trust in you because you perpetually have a countdown clock. Um, if, if there's a countdown to a sale, take the countdown clock off for a while until the next sale or the next promotion. Number two, exit pops. Um, if somebody is leaving your website, there are a million reasons why they will be doing this, but they don't want to leave your website so that you can entice them with showing them another product, yet another product on your website. Um, if they're leaving, they're in a hurry. So try to collect an email uh, and give them some sort of discount coupon for doing that. Uh, one of the tools that I use on several sites is hellobar.com. Check them out. Number three, again, uh, for the exit pop, you might try, depending on what you're um, selling or your services are, you might try giving a $1 trial gift for like a 30-day free subscription or uh, something along those lines. Now, what's good about this is uh, on the exit intention, it's not going to affect the front end sales. That means the people that are buying your products and service uh, without leaving your website. This is a last ditch effort to try to retain a customer. Number four, geotag headlines on landing pages. This is especially true uh, if you are running a big campaign to specific areas like Chicago or LA or New York or Florida, whatever. Uh, maybe not Florida, sorry, I mean city specific. Uh, you want to say, you know, hello, New York, put it in the headline and it makes people feel more comfortable and relative that the message is being delivered directly to them. Number five, remarketing. I should just stop with remarketing. Do remarketing. <laughs> um, there are all sorts of ways to do it. You can do YouTube remarketing, Facebook remarketing, Google remarketing. Or you can use a couple of different services like AdRoll or Retargeter to do your remarketing. They make it very, very easy. Uh, and I think that we see a sometimes seven or eight to one return on our retargeting uh, ad spend. Product page continued. Uh, number six, trust symbols. Include trust symbols on your product page. Uh, I have it there. It says color because you want them to do. Uh, you want people to see it in color. You want it to be prominent uh, and displayed on your product page. Optimize your meta tags. Uh, what you're going to do here? I'm talking about our title tags. You want to make sure that they are uh, optimized for what's uh, the the exact product, and it's clear and it's not full of a bunch of clutter. Uh, and secondly, you want your meta description to be nicely written. Uh, the reason for this is when people see it in search, they'll see your title tag as the main headline and then they see that little uh, two line snippet down below. Uh, people read that. Make sure that you're talking about a, a good benefit 
uh, in the keywords that relate to your product or title. Number eight, product images. These product images need to be awesome, great. Uh, actually, it says right there. Uh, and you need to at least have six pictures. Um, I would go more if you can, but don't put two mediocre uh, pictures up there. Certainly not pictures that are from Alibaba or you know something along those lines. Number nine, product description. Put your product description in bullet points and you want each of these short lined bullet points to be talking in a selling manner. Um, not so technical and analytical, but you know, use words like awesome, great, feature rich, things like that. Number 10, customer reviews. Put customer reviews on your product page. It helps. Uh, you want to use product reviews that are both about the product itself and some that are about your store, like excellent customer service, fast shipping, blah, blah, blah. Number 11, leverage headlines in your product description. What I mean by that is, and I see a mistake, I got H exclamation point. That's supposed to be H1 or H2 tags. Uh, Google picks up on these tags and sees them as more important. Don't just uh, make the text larger by making it a larger size 18 and bold font, okay? Number 12, features list. Uh, and if you can include a feature, a benefit, kind of bullet point list about your product with images, it's even better. Number 13, recommended products. Uh, you want, if somebody say searching for a camera, uh, this would be the time to show them a, a Sony camera, a Nikon camera, a Canon camera, show them alternative models of the camera because they're still shopping for a camera at this stage. Number 14, if you haven't guessed by now, add a big add to cart button. Not not super big, not offensively big, but make sure that it is prominently displayed, especially for mobile. You want it to be easily clicked by that thumb. Number 15, customer service phone number. We are building trust and rapport with the customer at this point. Make sure that the customer feels like they can reach you if they have a problem or if they have a question. Number 16, company address, same as 15. Make sure that uh, the company address is prominently displayed so that you're not some hokey virtual seller that's here today and gone tomorrow. Cart page. Number 17, define the number of steps from cart to finish, uh, like a progress bar or numbers or something. People want to know how long until they can be done with this process. People are in a hurry. Number 18, re recommended products, uh, products that complement, not but differentiate. So again, earlier on the product page, we were showing them different models of cameras. Now we're showing them upgrades to their choice, like memory cards or uh, carry cases, tripods, things along those lines. Uh, again, 19, carry on with the customer service phone number on the cart page. You want to maintain the trust uh, with the customer. Speaking of trust, number 20, trust symbols, same ones that were on the product page, except uh, they're grayed out now. We want a, a toned down version of the same thing to continue the, the, the trust, but we don't want to really bring a lot of attention to it. We just want to carry on with it. Number 21, coupon codes. Make sure that you have the coupon code feature enabled in your store. And the checkout page. Number 22, less is more. The less you have a customer do, the higher your conversion rate will be. Full stop. You want to have more white space, less clutter. You want, if you have a call to action on there, be very clear. Uh, short sentences have a purpose. Number 23, you want to maintain the trust. So link back to the cart. Don't make people feel like they're trapped. Uh, you want to have a customer service phone number. Uh, again, available. You want to maintain the trust throughout the whole checkout process and make sure that all of your SSL certs, if on your particular shopping cart, that's where this kicks in, make sure that it has a big green check uh, for your SSL cert. Number 24, keep costs clear. Uh, don't bait and switch at checkout. People are so aware of this and it ticks them off to no end. So 
be clear about it. If somebody wants your product, you don't have to pull the wool over their eyes to get them to buy it. Also, you want to offer different shipping solutions if applicable. Um, people like to buy. People don't like to be sold. So just like you let them make the decision through this whole uh, uh, process, you still want them to be able to make the decision at checkout for their shipping. Checkout page continued. You wanna offer multiple checkout options. I would probably offer at least two, but not more than three. You have your store payment gateway like Shopify payments, you have Google checkout, PayPal, Amazon, uh, people have their wallets integrated with these services already. And I mean their wallets that are in their pockets. <laughs> integrated with these services so it makes checkout faster and easier and more secure for them. Number 26, optimize your mobile checkout. Um, over 65% of smartphone users have made a purchase this year. And mobile users are very easily distracted, right? Um, uh, they could be shopping for something while they're watching their kid's soccer game uh, and the kid goes to score a goal uh, and they you know move away from their phone or something you want to uh, make it very easy for them to come back include a save for later or a wish list or something along these lines um, definitely increases our um, our win back uh, checkout rate number 27 you want to upsell in the cart, not the final checkout page. Don't do any recommended uh, products or upsells or anything here. We, we've had the time to do that at the proper stage. Now we just want them to put their credit card number in, conclude the transaction, and move on. Number 28, I think, speaks for itself. <laughs> Have an abandoned cart strategy. Uh, just like number 26 when I was saying, you want to be able to get those win backs later on so sending them uh, emails i wouldn't even bother especially at the holidays trying to seduce them into uh, coming back by telling them about the benefits or whatever i would just go straight for offering them a coupon at this point your percentage rate is so low do whatever it takes to win back that sale uh anyways that is my 28 uh, tips that uh, boost conversion rate. So if you want to share your conversion tips below, I totally would appreciate it. I know everybody else would too. Hey, thanks for sitting in. I uh, appreciate you guys stopping by. I hope that you're able to take those steps and apply them to your website. Um, they are obviously good for the holidays. They are good for any days. Uh, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Appreciate you. I'll see you next time.